Hello and welcome to another Major Market Movements End of the Week Market Review for August 14th, 2015. I'm Quad G and in this video we're covering the PM Complex. Starting off with gold here and it has moved up uh, as expected. It came up and touched the, uh, the bottom part of the um, initial target range. Uh, which is basically about 11.25 to 11.40. Uh, uh, it could move up higher than that uh, coming up, but um, that's just the uh, initial zone that I was looking to take profit out of. Uh, definitely holding on to a majority long position, as I think this, is, the last couple of days here, has just been a corrective pullback, uh, which may end fairly soon, and then uh, we'll see another push up higher. And I'll show you the reasons why uh, it makes sense to be having a small corrective pullback here uh, in the uh, QG3 here with the uh, uh, 3 EMA in red, the 10 EMA in green there, and then the 20 DMA, uh, which is basically the center line of the uh, Bollinger Bands. The 20 DMA is right there in blue. And uh, you see that we came up, basically blew right through the 20 DMA, didn't spend much time there and then came right up and hit the, uh, the upper Bollinger Band. So uh, taking a little bit of a breather here makes sense. Uh, we may come back. The price could come down as far as the uh, the 10 EMA uh, right there at 11.06. You can see previously on the downtrend, the 10 EMA, this green line, had uh, proved itself as resistance a number of times. Uh, so this go around, the... Uh, that dynamic could flip around and we could actually see the, t the 10 EMA become support um, with a renewed uh, uptrend. The 20 DMA is also a key support. Uh, and it hasn't quite turned a corner here, here yet, but possibly next week I think you could see we'll be seeing that 20 DMA flatten out and maybe even start to uh, curl to the upside. also want to point out that the Bollinger Bands here are pinching in. And that means that energy is being built up for a potential uh, impulsive move. Uh, and obviously that'll, uh, we should see that uh, resulting move come about once the Bollinger Bands start to flare um, the lower band pushing downward and the up, upper band pushing upward. That's what I consider a flare. And that usually uh, is a key indication that the energy that was built up with this pinch is being let loose and uh, I think what will end up being to the upside. Um, <clears throat> see if you can find a, another good example here uh, of a pinch. You can see the Bollinger Bands here pinched uh, very well and the uh, 20 DMA was starting to uh, drift to the downside. Uh, the QG3 was in a bearish alignment just slightly and then you start to see some fall through to the downside soon thereafter. And you can see that the Bollinger Bands flared here. Upper band went upwards, lower band went downwards, and that uh, was our in first indication that things were going to um, uh, shoot off to the downside here and continue to roll, and uh, we certainly did see that. Um, so, but I expect this time around we could be in the opposite direction, meaning this uh, the resulting buildup of energy here from a pinching Bollinger Band, um, I think could has a decent chance of seeing that energy and be uh, expelled to the upside. Um, but I want to see the price action keep above the 20 DMA, especially on a daily closing basis. All right, so on the weekly chart here, gold comes up and does a uh, inside. Double key reversal closing above uh, these last two negative candles uh, of the two previous uh, weeks there. So uh, we basically engulfed those two and came up about halfway into the uh, the previous larger negative candle to the downside. So this is a, a pretty good sign of a turnaround here. Obviously, setting key uh, setting a key support at the previous um, um, negative candle there, that with a low of about 1080. So as long as we stay above 1080, uh, this signal is, is still good for a midterm advance, 
to the upside. All right, the EWO here, we are seeing a, um, uh, well, not quite, almost, almost a positive divergence on the upside, meaning that the oscillator is just about to move up above this, um, the previous swing high here. Here's the previous swing high. And the oscillator may be breaching above this point on the oscillator, making a higher high in the oscillator compared to the last swing high, uh, even though the price level is still at a lower high compared to the last swing high. So um, <clears throat> that sets up uh, the potential for a positive divergence on the downside if this if this was the stall in that uh, 11.30 to 11.42 range, or maybe even 11.50. If we were to stall there and turn back around and make a lower low in the price, under uh, under uh, 10.75 there, if we were to see that happen, it would more than likely set up a positive divergence on the downside of the oscillator. Um, just uh, a good in indication that um, even though we got might get a, a new low later on, uh, it would set up a really good possibility of a uh, of a stronger bottom that could uh, result in a stronger move to the upside uh, later on. Uh, the RSI here very close to doing the same thing, a little bit more to the upside. Maybe uh, this uh, the RSI may come up to the uh, RSI might come up here to the 60 level, and that would produce a higher high uh, compared to the uh, the last swing high in the oscillator, which means that if we did get another incremental lower low under that 1075 level, maybe down as far down as um, say 1040 or so later on, uh, that we could still be in positive uh, divergence territory with uh, regards to the RSI. The MACD is in an open alignment to the upside, so that's bullish on the daily. Uh, on the weekly, we're still in a negative negative alignment to the downside, so that's bearish. Okay. Um, I'm going to move these out of the way. No, I can't move those here. Okay. So uh, overall expectation for gold is that we may be in a corrective move right now. Um, it, it may present another really good opportunity to get in on the long side before pushing up uh, a bit higher in uh, the not too distant future. All right, let's take a look at silver. All right, silver pretty much uh, in lockstep with gold here. We may be seeing a pullback. And also, um, this is a possibility of a right uh, shoulder of a bullish inverted head and shoulders pattern. Uh, this dive down here being the left shoulder, uh, basically got a double head here. Uh, this would be the right neckline. And then, so this dip down could be a right shoulder, maybe dipping down into, say, the 15 dollar level maybe even a slightly below that before turning around breaking above the neckline which is right here roughly about 1560 ish uh, and a break of that later on could send the price up considerably higher um, uh, let's go with the basic measure uh, just a quick measure here 1560 minus the low uh, the low there is about um, 1440. Yeah, it's about a buck 20 uh, in potential there. So about tack on a buck 20 uh, above 1560, and you got um, about 1680 is the potential uh, fall through from such a measurement. And interesting, interestingly enough, that 
would come up here to fill in, see 1680 is right about here, that would completely fill in this previous uh, manic move to the downside, which was not completely filled um, earlier on. So that all that movement would certainly make sense. Um, will we get that high? No guarantees, but uh, wouldn't surprise me either. All right. Uh, let's see. Silver on the uh, QG3. We're in a bullish alignment to the upside, though. Uh, <clears throat> we the three EMA here has come up right up against the Bollinger Band, uh, and we got some a couple daily closes uh, well above the Bollinger Band. So this is uh, kind of some overheated movement, and it needs some uh, breathing time, uh, some corrective time. So I think that's what we're doing here. Is we're just seeing silver. Uh, correct down from such a um, um, a uh, overbought condition here, and yeah, we're just going to pull back in here. Maybe come down to test the uh, 20 DMA, which is currently there at about 1485, uh, and moving up uh, to some degree. So, watch for next week a, a possible test of the 20 DMA uh, at the lowest extent uh, that I would expect on this corrective pullback. And then from there, we may see another move higher. Okay, let me zoom in here. So uh, silver moves higher on the week here. Uh, previously, I talked about a hairy bottom. And this is a perfect example of a hairy, hairy bottom where you get some long shadows from these weekly candles uh, below the uh, uh, below that uh, 1465 level, the close of that negative candle, uh, you get some fairly deep incursions below that point, but they uh, recover back up above that uh, lowest close. So you for three days in a row, three not three days, three weeks in a row of those type of incursions creates what is called a hairy bottom, and now I think we're starting starting to see a uh, some fall through to the upside. Uh, there can be some hairy tops as well. Um, the hairy tops and hairy bottoms are not uh, all that prevalent in uh, this in this market, but you do see them come across from time to time, and uh, they do um, have a have a tendency to generate a turnaround in the price, like we're seeing. Silver on the EWO. Uh, where the last swing high really, well, let's see here. Well, I, I think it would be, yeah, I, th I would say it, this would be classified as the last, one of the last swing highs. Um, this one as well, right here at about 1567 and 1644. So, so, and you can see that the oscillator has uh, completely engulfed those last two swing highs in the oscillator. So this is setting up a positive divergence on the top side of this oscillator. Um, so that means if we, even if we did see another lower low in the price, it would more than likely set up a positive, another positive divergence um, in the oscillator and allow for um, the strengthening of a bottom and a turn around and uh, advance to the upside thereafter. You can see that we're already working on a double positive divergence in this oscillator, or not double, excuse me, just a single. Uh, can't count this swing low here. But we do have it uh, between this swing low and this one here. Um, so that's a, that's a positive development. Uh, I think if we did see the, this market turn around and push right back down into a lower low in the price, maybe come down into 14 or 13.85 possibly, um, you know, we would probably still uh, have in place a uh, another higher low in the oscillator producing a double positive divergence going forward. Uh, again, just strengthening the, the potential for a uh, significant, if not major, bottom uh, coming out of such a low. Uh, silver daily uh, RSI, we've come up here to the 60 level, um, and we've stalled out there, uh, pulling back into this correction. That's fine. Uh, but going forward, I want to see the, uh, oscill 
this oscillator, the RSI, preferably keep above the 40 level in the RSI. That's going to, to do that would uh, help the potential midterm advance to the upside um, thereafter. So key level to be watching for. We certainly could break through and come up here to 70, and that would just strengthen the case of, uh, of a potential bottom being in, and um, we're, we're starting to see a, uh, a major run to the upside right here now and not later, if that was to take place. Our, uh, let's see, the MACD on the daily is open to the upside. That's uh, a bullish indication. Uh, but the weekly is still in a bearish limit to the downside, so it's mixed. Um, overall for silver, I would say that we've got a, a good chance of a bounce up here. Um, it may uh, it may only come up here to, say, the 1650 level or maybe even that 1685 level or 1680 level, as I pointed out to you, with that uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern. Uh, that's a... That's a possibility, but um, whether it's going to, um, there's some indication that in the Elliott wave terms that this may just be a wave four to the upside before another fifth wave five to the downside to a new lower low. Um, the only thing that would scrub off that potential is a new uh, swing high taking out this previous midterm swing high up here. It's the 1780 uh, level. So. If we stay under that 1780 level and stall right up here in this somewhere between, say, 1650 and 1680, um, that to me would be an indication that uh, we may turn right back around and come uh, slamming back down here into the $14, $14 level, maybe in 1385, somewhere in there. Um, may finish out a fifth wave uh, potential. Uh, let's take a look at Platinum. All right, so platinum here is looking to, like it's turning around. We've got a new short-term swing high developed, taking out this last swing high. Um, this could also be a right um, neckline of an inverted head and shoulders pattern, uh, just needing a little dip down into a right shoulder, and then from there, another push higher. Uh, maybe fill in some of this manic drop, uh, potentially, and maybe hit this uh, trend line currently above here, let's say uh, currently as of today, yeah, that trend line's right up there at about 1088. Um, but by the time you hit it, it may be, uh, we hit it maybe about 1065 or so. Um, and that would fill in this manic move to the downside. And then from there, there could be yet another um, drop thereafter. Um, Let's see here. The uh, QG3 is in a bullish alignment. You can see that today's uh, intraday move, intraday business here, um, came down. The low was at uh, 981.50 there. And it came down and uh, found some support right at the 10 EMA. So that's good, a good indication that the market is respecting the uh, these key levels in uh, the 10 EMA and uh, the 20 DMA could also be respected if it uh, if it come down it comes down and gets tested um, and you can see in previous pre previous times there the uh, 10 EMA proved as resistance so did the 20 DMA so if we do get a full fledged turnaround here um, uh, I would expect those levels to turn uh, into support going forward you got a little bit of a Bollinger Band pinch there as well. Platinum on the weekly, we do get an inside double key reversal on the weekly, so that's bullish. That sets a key low at the previous week's uh, low. That low is at 940. So we could see some fall through to the upside off of this bullish uh, weekly candle. Um, just to, I know that I got a few uh, new guys watching this week, so I wanted to uh, go into a little bit more detail here and show you that we, the reason that I call this a positive candle this week um, inside double key reversal is because uh, the beginning of this week was inside the previous week 
Um, it didn't extend below last week's low, so it's inside. Uh, and it comes up and closes above the previous two negative closes. Um, and so this week, obviously, was engulfed. And the second week, uh, previous, was also engulfed. So inside, double key reversal. Um, so the expectation is while we're above the, sw the last swing low there at uh, 940, there is some good potential for some fall through to the upside. Uh, again, possibly coming up here to uh, 1060, maybe even 1080 to fill in some of this manic movement to the downside. Okay. Um, the we do have a, a positive divergence there. I pointed it out to you, uh, and we are starting to see some fall through to the upside off of that in the EWO there. Um, the platinum on the RSI also saw the positive divergence there on the daily and uh, push upwards back into the uh, 4060 range, uh, parking it right about 47, which is somewhat neutral. Um, and platinum on the MACD is open to the upside on the daily and on the weekly. It's still open to the downside much like the other uh, parts of the PM complex. So um, pretty good chance of a bottom here. It may, uh, across the board, gold, silver, and platinum, um, this may just be another small dead cat bounce uh, that may extend for a few more days, maybe even a week or two. Um, and then there's a chance that it could uh, stall out, turn right back around, and give us maybe one more incremental low thereafter, possibly... Um, I could see it running into uh, possibly October, where you'll see um, the the next swing low, um, lower low in the in these um, gold, silver, and platinum. So we'll watch and we'll watch and see. Um, but for now, things are still looking pretty uh, bullish for this turnaround, this bounce up. Um, so we'll keep hold of our long positions and see where it takes us. Could I be wrong about um, the lower low and October, absolutely. Um, you know, we don't, we play the, these markets uh, day by day. Um, so we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves with how, with our projections. Um, it, there certainly could be, a lot, you know, we got a few days here of some upside. There's plenty of opportunity for some crazy movements, maybe to the upside that would, could, could potentially completely wash out uh, the potential of a lower low uh, later on in the year. So, again, best to just watch it day by day and make adjustments adjustments accordingly. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the Elliott Wave charts here I got uh, set up for you, uh, along with some other uh, technical analysis charts. I uh, just wanted to show you here that uh, gold uh, was sh showing subscribers for a few weeks now how... Um, this uh, 20 level is uh, a key level of support. We've seen it tested numerous times with uh, resulting um, strong moves to the upside. And you can see the last two times that the, the 20 DMA or 20 uh, level on the RSI was hit. You can see that the result uh, caused the RSI to come up here all the way up to the 70 level on both occasions. So uh, we were already up here into the 50 level. Uh, we could get a little bit of a pullback. You can see that uh, with each one of these surges, there was a, a little pullback in between each uh, surge to the upside. So the same thing can be seen here. We could pop up here, maybe pull back, and then another uh, shot upwards to test that 70 level again. Um, and I could see it going uh, to 1150. Could it go higher than that? Uh, possibly. We'll see. Um, but uh, there's certainly plenty of room here between where we're parked right now, which is about the 50 level, all the way up to 70. So there's plenty of room for some more upside movement in the oscillator. So best to keep long, in my opinion. Here's the, um, the short-term uh, LA wave count. Uh, this move to the upside is is very jagged, very choppy. Um, it's It's not incredibly easy to count. Um, but I am going with um, with the thought that this is just going to be a three-wave corrective move. 
with an A, B, and maybe C coming down soon. Maybe testing the 38.2% uh, FIBO right there at 11, uh, low 9. Maybe coming down here even to 11.05, uh, backtesting previous resistance uh, right there between uh, roughly 11.03 to 11.05. Um, and also the 50% FIBO is right there as well at about 11.04. Um, I would want to keep see it keep above this last uh, short-term swing low there at about 11.01. Uh, I just call that the micro uh, swing low, really, uh, because we're in that uh, two-hour time frame. But um, I would want to see that any kind of corrective move here, stay above that level, and then uh, resume from that point, uh, resume higher. Uh, this orange trend line is another key point of key resistance that's just up ahead, and it is currently right up here, roughly about 11.64 or so. By the time we intercept it, it may be down here into the 11.50 level um, and testing all kinds of resistance. So this could be a cluster of resistance uh, with that trend line right around here in about the 11.50 level uh, coming up. Uh, you can also, also want to point out here that... Uh, we had this shot down, and uh, this is looking like a false breakdown. We broke below that blue trend line and got everybody in a tizzy, thinking it was going to collapse, uh, but uh, it didn't. We've got this uh, pop to the upside here, and this is a good indication that this break below the, the blue trend line may have been just a, a false breakdown. And um, I think a lot of the a lot of times false breakdowns or uh, false breakouts to the upside, uh, I I do think the market makers, uh, you know, engineer these types of moves sometimes. Um, yeah, excuse me a minute, is this I veer off into a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but uh, I do think that there are times when market makers, people with uh, interests in in very big, very very big positions nothing like what we mess with but um, they see where they want to buy and so they were interested in buying right here at about the 1080 level um, and that's what they were shooting for is my uh, my my thought here and so what they thought what they were brewing here is they picked a moment when the the, the market was fairly thin in volume, and uh, they put in a, a fairly large order of shorts, caused the price to dip wildly below that uh, blue trend line. Uh, more, more than likely, there was a lot of uh, long side stops just below that trend line. And so what happens is when you force that, all of a sudden you've got a lot of previous bulls that had long side positions, they're all of a sudden having to be forced out because of their their stops, and you've got some um, uh, nervous Nellies out there that see a, the break of that blue trend line and go, oh my gosh, this is going to collapse, uh, this is going to fall fall apart. This we better get in short right now. Um, <clears throat> so they start building up a short position. All right, they start selling. Well, the, the, the selling from the previous bulls that were getting stopped out and the new bears that are developing new short positions, that's a lot of selling pressure. But because the market maker is wanting to buy an extremely big position right here at about the 1080 level, uh, the market maker who's wanting to get long may be uh, just sitting here buying up everything that the the small fish are throwing at him from the the stop loss and the new bear positions. They're just he's just sitting there buying it all up, and 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 is able to build a very large position uh, off of that right at the target level that uh, he was wanting it at. So, um, again, I have no way of proving that. I have no concrete evidence whatsoever. Um, I'm just this is just theory completely and I could be totally completely wrong but um, I do think um, you know I've seen other evidence of, of these kinds of moves that do take place um, especially in a market that is very oversold or very overbought um, 
and smart money comes in and sees a market that is uh, very oversold and they're, and they're wanting to establish a position, but they want to establish a position on their terms at the levels that they want um, and not just uh, because, you know, if a, if a um, you know, a market maker was to come in here and, and wanting to establish a very large position, um, you know, he doesn't want to be uh, causing a huge ramp up here that um, is, God forbid, uh, uh, benefit anybody else. <laughs> um, but also, uh, buying buying a huge position at the wrong place and time causes him to uh, buy it up over a long longer range that could be... Uh, um, uh, dropped back, you know, um, retraced quite a bit later on after the uh, the main their first initial mania dies down. So um, that's uh, that's the way I think some of these uh, these big fish, these sharks, like to uh, play it. Uh, all right, let's move on. <clears throat> all right, so here's silver. I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, again we've got uh, the the. Uh, we've got this silver bow heavily loaded up on one side, on the short side here, with the total shorts, total number of shorts um, eclipsing anything in history. I think certainly going well past uh, 1986. So um, all throughout, even the uh, the major lows here, uh, we're seeing total number of shorts well well in excess. Uh, those um, uh, levels of shorts way back here in these major lows. So this tells me that, yeah, a very significant low is brewing here. Uh, is it complete yet? Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's yet to be seen. Um, we would need to come up above, I believe it was the $21 level, to really be uh, certain that uh, a major low is finished. Um, Here's another. Here's the possibility that I'm seeing going forward is that this is just a wave four to the upside, maybe coming up here into the 12:30 range, maybe as high as uh, or not 12, excuse me, 16:30 range to 16:80 uh, range, somewhere in there for a wave four bounce, and then an, another possible drop off, maybe into October uh, for a final fifth. <clears throat> For a final fifth of uh, of C of two before a major run up uh, to the upside from there. Okay, uh, this is an Adam uh, a suspected Adam and Eve type of move where you've got a, a sharp, quick uh, down and up uh, for the Adam there, and now Eve is a, a much softer, slower move to the downside, uh, basically uh, marrying up with. The, the extent that Adam uh, produced there at about thirteen ninety nine, dollars So uh, Eve could come down there and meet Adam right around that period of time and then uh, or produce some uh, bullish offspring, if you will, and uh, cause the price to move considerably higher thereafter. <clears throat> All right, uh, silver. Uh, here's a shorter-term silver. Now, this is an uh, ending diagonal. And the general rule of thumb for ending diagonals is that you see the price of the ending diagonal, um, the price movement of the ending diagonal, which uh, started really up here at 1584. Uh, you see that the ED is completely retraced, usually in a shorter period of time than the amount of time that the ED took um, to form to the downside. And already we're already seeing that uh, dynamic playing out. We haven't completely uh, retraced the ED just yet. Um, that may come up here pretty soon, but uh, the speed at which the recovery is happening uh, is certainly fitting in with that uh, ending diagonal reversal or, uh, dynamic. So uh, everything's moving along just fine. Uh, again, I think uh, we'll find some support in and around here. Um, maybe as low as uh, 1483. The uh, 20 DMA is right there at about 1485. So I think that's where you're going to find some support. Um, maybe even as, as high as 1512. Somewhere in there, we'll see a turnaround and then uh, another shot up higher 
at least up to 1584, maybe uh, significantly higher into uh, 1630 to 1680s, um, possibly. All right. Let's take a look at the miners. GD action J here. This is the QG3. Uh, we're in a bullish alignment to the upside. Uh, we're starting to see it cool off a bit because we did have this fairly large extension of well above the upper Bollinger Band. That's just uh, manic behavior, overbought type behavior. You never, you rarely ever do you want to just, if you, you're thinking about buying with the price well above the upper Bollinger Band like that, it's just one of the dumbest things you could do. <laughs> I'll just be blunt. Um, when you see a market jump up like this and blast through the upper Bollinger Band, don't buy it on this day. Just don't. It just never, ever works out. Rarely ever. And does it make sense to, for you to be buying on such a an extreme move like that? Uh, it's better just to wait for the market to come back in, uh, find some stability uh, after this manic move, uh, have it cool off, and then find your uh, your entry point for another push higher potential potentially. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, GDX. Okay, um, so GDX here, QG3 is in a bullish alignment still, though contracted a bit. Uh, we're seeing the upper Bollinger Band provide some resistance for now. Um, so I expect uh, the price could come back here, maybe even test the uh, lower, uh, the 20 DMA uh, as a key level of support. Um, and then from there, maybe a, a strong move to the upside thereafter. Um, again, you can see the Bollinger Bands are pinching here, so some energy is building up for a, an impulsive move to come later on. Uh, again, here is, uh, we had this manic drop to the downside, largest daily volume ever, this negative move. Um, that was an indication that going forward, uh, you, you were going to see a post-flush distribution accumulation uh, zone right in here, and that's basically what you're seeing, is you're seeing... Um, you're seeing uh, a couple different things. This period right here is where uh, a lot of dumb money is re-engaging short, uh, if they're not short already, uh, while smart money is getting out of their short positions. They're moving into a long position. Uh, so you're seeing that transference from distribution to a new accumulation. It's, uh, dumb money pouring their money into the hands of the smart money, if you will. And, uh, and then you see the turnaround, all right, the recovery phase. Um, and whenever you see uh, extreme moves and volumes like this, especially in a market that's extremely oversold already, um, it's just very good territory for looking for uh, potential bottoms um, because you have such a great potential for, um, for a turnaround based off of uh, uh, this type of capitulation. Sense, senseless, in my mind, capitulation and senseless uh, market movements happen all the time. It's just the way the market functions. So, um, <clears throat> uh, GDX here is a micro count. I do see a completed five way move to the upside. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five look complete uh, for a, a initial wave one up. And then I think what we might be seeing here is a sharp double zigzag to the downside with a C, A, B, C, uh, initially three waves to the downside, a small X move, and now an A, a B move. I think the sideways is just uh, a B, B move here, and then one more uh, C move to the downside coming up early next week. Uh, could come down there to that um, uh, the breakout point of that uh, pink trend line just so happens to be the 61.8% FIBO right there at about 13.97. So that is um, a potential key level support there, uh, as well as uh, the 20 DMA right here is about 13.85, 13.90. So um, you could have a cluster of support right there at about 13.90 to 13.97, something like that. Um, and that's where I would expect a C of two to maybe complete, and then you start to see wave three, or 
a larger wave C to the upside. That's another possibility. Um, you can see that uh, this these manic moves, this uh, gap down here, this manic drop here, uh, never got back tested. Uh, oh, there's another little gap here. Uh, all of that could be filled with uh, the resulting move out of this secondary bottom. All right, going forward. All right, so that's it. I'm getting a little long-winded here. It's 40 minutes into this video. Sorry about that. Um, I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Adios.